And lastly, we have sleep aid supplements. Um, magnesium, valerian, and melatonin are the ones we're gonna look at here. Um, now, magnesium tends to be found either as a, a standalone magnesium thing or as part of ZMA, which I think is zinc, magnesium, and vitamin B6, if I remember correctly. Now, ZMA, there's no research on ZMA as a whole product, I don't believe. Uh, magnesium may help you get to sleep, um, but we don't know whether this is a function of correcting magnesium deficiency or uh, whether it's a function of just supplementing with more magnesium. We, we aren't really um, too clued up as to that just yet. It's highly unlikely to be dangerous, um, but higher doses may have laxative effects if you can't absorb the magnesium properly. Um, 200 to 400 milligrams uh, a day seems to be uh, good for just general sleep quality. Um, timing appears to be irrelevant, so it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to take it before bed. Um, if we're going on the whole correcting magnesium deficiency thing, that makes sense. Um, if you have sufficient magnesium, you're possibly likely to sleep better anyway, um, just as a result of, of improving that. Magnesium citrate appears to be the most bioavailable form of magnesium. So if you can get hold of magnesium citrate and you want to supplement with magnesium, look for that. Valerian um, may act as a sedative, um, but sleep latency, which is uh, the posh term for how quickly you fall asleep, and sleep quality aren't significantly improved in the studies done on valerian and high doses may give you kind of hangover like effects the next morning so uh, if you want to try it and see if it works it's unlikely to be dangerous um, but if you notice that you can't really function the next day it may you know maybe worth scaling back the dose uh, the research tends to point towards around 450 milligrams of valerian root an hour before sleep um, some people take this in capsule form, some people brew tea with it, it's, you know, it's up to you. The one that tends to be most reliable is melatonin. Now, melatonin is the hormone that your brain produces when it's dark in order to, um, basically, to send you to sleep. Um, and melatonin has been shown to be effective. But this tends to be uh, inherent to normalizing your circadian rhythm. So your circadian rhythm um, is your your body's kind of internal clock system that tells you um, when to go to sleep, when to wake up, when to eat, um, all the rest of it. So melatonin helps entrain the circadian rhythm. Um, so any sleep-related benefits tend to be because of that. Now, melatonin itself doesn't keep you asleep. Melatonin helps you fall asleep. Um, and what I will say with any of the, the sleep related stuff is if you or your clients are having genuine issues with sleeping, then that's probably not something for you to deal with outside of just general lifestyle modifications. So improved exercise levels, um, decreased stress levels, improved diet, um, things like improved mindfulness and self-reflection and stuff. These are all things that you can reasonably coach as a, a personal trainer. Um, but if somebody is having genuinely kind of clinically relevant sleep issues, it's probably worth saying you should, you know, you should probably go to your doctor about that. That's not for you to deal with as a personal trainer. Um, melatonin, when it comes to doses, the, the research points towards 500 micrograms um, up to five milligrams. You can either take this in one go or there is research as well on kind of gradually dosing it from a few hours before you want to go to sleep so that the levels of melatonin kind of gradually build up in your in your bloodstream um, and then it helps you fall asleep and there are generally no withdrawal symptoms um, in or side effects in a, a wide variety of populations in the uk it's not an over-the-counter supplement you do have to be prescribed it i will say that much mm -hmm.